Let's go, people! As long as our backup generator's working, you should be too. How do I know what class I'm in without my calendar? What about me? I, I have no emojis. How is anybody supposed to know how I feel without my daily emoji? Want to know how I feel about you, Justin? If Retro really is a teacher, it could be Miss Dowling, 10th grade English. Rumor has it she joined dateable.com and didn't even get one wink. Ouch. So now she's totally sworn off the internet. Hey, Michaela, what's up? What's up? Just calamity and chaos. I kind of like it without tech when we can all talk face to face for once. And... Kyle, don't take this personally, but I don't really have time for conversation right now, face to face or otherwise. Fine. Nice talking to you too. I think he took that personally. Really? Yeah. Come on. Get yourself to class, Patterson. You do not need your cell phone. When I was your age, all we had were our landlines and our wits. Okay, go. What about Assistant Principal Wilson? Last assembly, Wilson said that he wanted to make school a no phone zone. Of course, no one in the assembly was listening because they're all on their phones. Maybe this is his retribution. You okay, Brandon? Uh-huh. Are you phantom texting? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. It's going to be okay. We'll figure this out. You're not making me feel any better. Cash for trash, cash for trash. Ember, you're fundraising for your tech fair project, right? Now? Especially now. My anaerobic digester doesn't need electricity. It runs on good old fashioned compost. For instance, the gas juicing my lantern used to be actual juice. But turns out, rustling up biodegradable material is harder than you think. Janitor Larry, I thought we had an arrangement. Yesterday's Kung Pao Chicken Lunch Special is tomorrow's Green Energy. Sorry about that, Ember. Look at you, sir. Mother Earth high fives you. Okay. Come on, party people, and let's enjoy this technological vacay. You might actually have to read a book. And that will be groovy to the max. Mr. Kruger, secret agent room, five minutes. Mind if I use your lantern for a sec? Sure. Guys, listen. I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. The world will have a generation of idiots. Albert, Albert Einstein. Einstein. With a favorite quote like that, Gruber could so be retro. He does wear corduroy bell bottoms. It's muy tragic. Tragic? Or all part of a retro wardrobe. Gruber also always carries around that suspicious man purse. Maybe he's hiding a spare retro mask. Cam and I have him second period. We've got to get a look inside that man purse. But how are we supposed to do it without our usual tech wear? Hmm. Good thing I always carry the classic Innovate Issue Secret Agent gear. The decoder ring and lipstick message shooter. We're gonna need a distraction. I've got it covered. And it's battery powered. Dad, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you again for letting me come here. You're very welcome, sweetheart. But you're the one who earned this. Are you sure it's not too expensive? Oh, well, I'm sure. I'll go meet the others. All these submissions are amazing. <laughs> that was very sweet. Yeah, yeah, she's a great kid. <laughs> I'm Jenny. Jenny Wallace. Charles Coyle. My friends call me Chuck. Oh. Actually, no, that, that's not true. Uh, no one calls me Chuck. I don't know, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> let's, let's just stick with Charles. OK, Charlie it is. <laughs> that's my daughter, Tessa. It's a silver-based astronomical telescope. Not only does it have a high reflectance rating, but its coating makes it less susceptible to stress in the Mars atmosphere. Amazing! I can't believe you made that! So this is what you submitted to get into the Mars camp? Yep. It's a retractable treadmill built so astronauts can exercise more. In space, due to microgravity, our proximal femoral bone loses up to 15% of its mass per month. You mean 1.5% bone mass per month, right, Gordon? Right. Of course, either way, it'll help me keep my awesomely toned bod on Mars. <laughs> mm. 
I'd show you both a real six-pack, but it'd be like staring into the sun. Please, don't. First lesson of DM camp, don't pay attention to that guy. You know you can't do that, Camelot. Space, I'm a bright, shining star. Camelot? He even sounds like Justin. Where do you think Justin learned it? Dr. Crawford? Please hurry, Owl. I only jammed the camera feed to this office for one minute so you can look through Dr. Crawford's files. Relax, Addison. <laughs> you know, I'd pace if I have legs. Michaela, can I help you? Uh, no, ma'am. I was just dropping off these files you asked for. Thank you. Um, I, uh, actually have some others for Professor Cato, but I haven't seen him. Neither have I. I'm starting to get concerned. Would you like me to try to reach him? No, no, I'm, I'm sure he'll turn up. Oh, Michaela. You're doing a very nice job here. Thank you, Dr. Crawford. Keep it up. Start a search of Professor Cato's last known addresses. I will. Right after my bit break returns to normal. That was close. <laughs> killed it. Well, you also killed your Saturday, hot dog. I'll see you in detention. Principal Wilson, you want to see my trick? Sure, but uh, I dabble in magic too, so I'm not easy to impress. Pick a card. Now, remember it, and put it back. Is it the Nine of Diamonds? No, but good guess. Well done, McAllister. Might want to hold the applause. You like magic? Poof! Your Saturday just disappeared. I will see you in detention. Remember, in order for it to record, I have to continuously apply it. So get her to say something rapido. Capiche? <laughs> Perf. Now we just have to talk to her. Emoji frightened face. Deb. In. Um, I'm Bryden. This is Adrian. Since we never formally met, we figured we'd say hi, and hopefully you'll say hi back, and then I'll say something, and you'll say something, and before you know it, a full-on combo. Stop talking. Let her talk. <laughs> uh, so if you want to say hi back, uh, any hi will work. Hello. Hey. Sup. Hello. Your friend looks like a clown. Who's the clown now? <laughs> Nothing suspicious yet. Well, if she's really planning something at Tuttle's launch tonight, she's got to make her move soon. Then let's go to work. We're going to track her every move. There, Dev. Finn. So I heard one of your brothers is a mechanic. We're building a water-powered car for the tech fair, so if you could spare any parts, that'd be awesome. What's in it for me? Oh, really? I was expecting a no or a get out of my face, but we'll work something out. I'll get back to you. Intruder. 
remind me to surprise you more often. I usually don't like frosting, but this is killer good. I need you to call Brian Cam. And then we saw for sure, meaning Lazarus is behind everything. She's been watching the Quail and I this entire time. Now it makes sense why she quit today. I guess running an evil empire is more rewarding than making scones. <laughs> Guys, this whole thing has been about Lazarus getting revenge on the Quail and Innovate. We have to stop her. Michaela, the Quail said this was too dangerous. And I believe her. Now more than ever, you have to let it go. Besides, if something happened to you, we'd never forgive ourselves. Come on, I, I can't do this alone. I need you. Em, we're responsible for all this going wrong in the first place. Clearly, we're not cut out to be secret agents. You're all more capable than you know. I have total faith in you guys. That's just it. We don't have faith in ourselves. We're sorry, Em. Me too. I'm doing. Looks like you're randomly throwing your clothes around your room. <sighs> there, ready. Michaela. No, you don't understand what it's been like to bounce around from town to town my entire life. I finally felt like I belonged somewhere. I made friends. And they'll always be your friends no matter where you go. But we have to leave for our own safety. Why? Why do we have to run? Why can't we stay and fight back? Or maybe you don't want to fight back. I don't have to explain this to you. I'm your boss and your mother. Now we're leaving before sun up. End of discussion. You know, maybe none of this would have ever happened if Innovate had a better leader. That's enough, Michaela. Face it, Quail. Lazarus beat you, and you can't handle it. All right, I know you're upset and emotional. Maybe I gave you too much responsibility. Clearly, you weren't ready for it. Oh, really? Well, if that's how you feel, maybe I should just go somewhere where my talents will be appreciated. We're done here. Just finish packing. I smell opportunity. 